Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'd like to begin Shabbat by welcoming Ari and Chris and Matt to light our Shabbat candles as we begin Ari's Bar Mitzvah celebration this weekend. We kindle the lights of Shabbat, and we hope that we take a little bit of the warmth and light inside of us. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher K'neshanu B'mitzvotach, V'tzivanu L'chad Likner, L'chad Likner, Shel Shabbat. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. 
One of my rabbis always taught that Shabbat comes when we need it most. And at this moment, I need Shabbat. And I imagine that many of you do too. This past week has been an emotional roller coaster for so many of us as we sit with our despair and our collective pain. Because whether or not we know someone personally in Israel, we are all family, connected as Klal Yisrael, the community of Israel. And that means that if one of us is in pain, then we are all in pain. And so we sit with our collective sorrow, wondering what to do with that pain, wondering how we who sit halfway across the world can help, looking for something to do. But the truth is, we're already doing it. What can we do? We can come together in this sanctuary to celebrate Shabbat. We can turn toward each other, our sacred community, for strength when we're brought low. We can look to the teachings of Torah and the beauty of our liturgy to find wisdom and solace in the tradition that's been handed down to us, Lador Vador, from one generation to the next. And we can take pride in the Judaism that has been gifted to us and share it with our children and those who come after us. We can come together as a Temple Israel family to mark milestones in our lives, birthdays and anniversaries, refusing to allow hatred to diminish our joy. And we can call one of our young people to Torah as a bar mitzvah, celebrating the immense joy and the great responsibility that Ari takes as he holds fast to Torah throughout his life. We can take the words of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel to heart who taught us that there are three ways to mourn. The first is with tears, the second is with silence, and the third is with song. And so tonight on this Shabbat, we'll lift up our voices and take comfort and solace in singing together as one loving community. Just a few moments ago, Ari and his family kindled the lights of Shabbat which stand as two bright pillars of light glimmering amidst the darkness of the world. We're reminded on this Shabbat Bereshit that God created light from the chaos of the dark and spread that light over the earth. On this Shabbat, we pray that the lights of our Shabbos candles will seep into our souls, giving us the strength that we need for the work ahead. And we pray that our light here will reach Israel, giving strength and comfort to all those who are in need of a little bit of light amidst the darkness. In the book of Esther, we read the words, La Yehudim Hayita Ora, the Simcha, the Sason, Vikar. After the horrors of Haman, the Jewish people enjoyed light and gladness, honor and joy. Kain Tihielanu, may we too experience these blessings. Together we say, Amen. Amen. We'd like to take a moment first to welcome all of our guests here this evening, those who are joining us from our tri-faith communities in solidarity, as well as the members of the church brought here by Reverend Chris Alexander. I'd like to welcome your community as well. Thank you for being here. We invite you on the Shabbat, as so many of us might be feeling alone and isolated and hurting, to turn and greet someone. Maybe to wish them words of welcome, wish them words of Shabbat, or even to wish them words of comfort. I invite you now to take a few moments to greet someone around you. And of course, we also welcome the family and friends of the extended Blumkin family who are joining for this weekend celebration as well. At this time, I'd like to invite up to our Bima anybody who is celebrating an anniversary during the month of October. Do we have any October anniversaries out there? No pressure. In that case, we will transition and invite anybody celebrating a birthday during the month of October, and we must have those. Statistics say there has to be at least one October birthday out there. Two. Three. 
I invite you guys to come on up to the bima. Normally we do this on the first Friday, but last Friday was Simchat Torah, so we're doing it the second Friday because sometimes things change. You guys will come stand over here in front of the ark, but looking out at the congregation. Now before we offer up words of blessing in honor of your October birthdays, what I'd like to do, it's a tradition I brought here, is I invite you to offer up one of three numbers. And because it's Shabbat, all three are valid. How old you are, how old you feel, or how old you'd like us to believe you are. <laughs> and all three are valid on Shabbat. 70. Seven, 70. 70. Mazel tov. Oh, <laughs> Mazel tov. 16. 16. <laughs> Mazel tov. 24. <laughs> Mazel tov. 50. Mazel tov. So... Our prayer for you in honor of your birthdays, which you may have already celebrated or which may be coming up this month. We wish you a day of celebration and rejoicing. May it be reflective of the warmth and humanity that you spread throughout your family, you, your community, and the world. May you continue to grow in stature, in wisdom, in love, in kindness. May you continue to explore the world, be able to celebrate a moment of great rejoicing. And may you also find comfort in friends and community at times of sorrow. But most importantly, may you be blessed from strength to strength. Kin hiratzom be this God's will. Together we say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to offer up a special blessing for you guys. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shecheanu Vekimanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh Ah Ah Amen Bless be you, Adonai, our God, who has created us, who has sustained us, and who has enabled us to reach such a wonderful occasion. And another tradition I brought with me in honor of your birthdays, each of you gets a chocolate. <laughs> Marvel. Now, if you were celebrating an anniversary, you would get kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov, guys. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Happy birthday. Mazel tov. Happy birthday. And because it's Happy your birthday, birthday, you don't have to share the chocolate. Happy if birthday. You don't want to. <laughs> And now we will continue with some of the melodies of Kabbalat Shabbat with Lechadodi. Shamur Vizahur Vidir 
all those who so choose to rise in body and or in spirit for the Baruch Hu, the call to worship. Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohenu Melcha Olam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bachochma Poteach Sha'arim Uvit Vuna Mashane Itim U Machalif et Hazmanim U Sader et Hakochavim Bamishmarotechem Barakia Kirtsono Bore Yom Valila Golel or Mipne Hoshech Bahoshef Mipne or Uma Avir Yom Ume Vilaila Ube Dil Bain Yom Uvein Laila Adonai Seva O Chamo El Chai Bakayam Tamidium Loch Alenu La Olam Vaed Baruch Ata Adonai Hama Ariv Aravim. Amen. Thank you. Shema
In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The The high high heavens heavens declare declare your glory. glory. May May earth reveal reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt we were delivered. At Sinai we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired Inspired by by prophets prophets and instructed by sages, time and again we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let Let us continue continue to work work for the day day when the nations nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. God's healing presence to be with us as we enter the scariness of night. So as we began this service with a psalm of brokenhearted, so do we have at this moment of hashkivenu, this moment of praying to be carried through the night, this prayer for God to heal all the broken hearts.
At this time in our worship service, we transition to the Amidah, the central section of our prayer experience. The standing prayers you can find up on our screens. We invite all those who so choose to rise in body and or in spirit as we face the ark together. Adonai, sefatai tiftach, ophia girdilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei avotinu v'imoteinu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sara, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah, Ha'el ha'gadol ha'kibor v'hanora, El Elyon, Tomer chasadim tovim v'kanei ha'kot, V'zocher chasei avot v'imahot, We continue silently, and when you so choose, you may be seated.
Shabbat service, we take a moment for prayer. A moment of prayer for complete healing, healing of the mind, the body, and the spirit, of the people that we hold in our hearts and in our community. We pray for Susan Alexander, Doris Alloy, Joe Alvarado, Susie Anderson, Cal Arnold, Leslie Bartlett, Virginia Becker, Jim Bender, Tony Baraldi, Jeff Bradfield, Jean Brosco, Lisa Brunkhorst, Hildardo Carrera, Sandy Christofferson, Ashley Coleman, Kevin Cooper, Lauren Cooper, Ken Cowan, John Cunningham, Janie Dan, Jen Dawson, Dominic Eves, Rachel Eves, Ariana Elness, Scott Farkas, Mildred Fisher, Jenny Forrell, Judy Kaiman, Ronald Kaplan, Nancy Katz, Karen Levin, Elaine Susan Marcus, Brandy Matson, Emily McWhorter, Brian Nog, Nadine Ostro, Doris Parker, Wendy Passer, Gail Peterson, Kathy Papelka, Brian Prewitt, Mark Ratner, Steve Redler, June Richards, Mimi Rogers, Gloria Romero Downing, Holly Rosenberg, Samuel Rosinski, George Sachs, Steve Seglin, Teresa Serrano, Linda Scharf, Micah Scharf, Robert Scharf, Linda J. Sherman, Renee Sloan, Dee Dee Spiegel, Kaylin Stoner, Chrissy Swenson, Kurt Tate, Sarah Jane Tietzel, Laura J. West, Barb Wig, Brent Wine, Norm Wine, and Kate Yule. If there are others that we're praying for this Shabbat, I invite you to share their name aloud if you're in the sanctuary or to share their name online if you are joining us virtually. Also pray for Sheldon Babendor, Diana Ekpokin, and Claudio Korn. They join together. We think of as well all those victims of the recent horrific terror attacks in Israel who are recovering of body, of mind, of spirit as well. I'd like to start tonight with a reflection. 
I was very blessed to travel to Israel this past February, which already seems like a lifetime ago, for the Central Conference of American Rabbis convention. The convention typically takes place across the United States at various cities, but once every seven years or so, they hold it in Israel. Part of the reason is to connect us with the land, part of the reason is to connect us with the people, part of the reason is to connect us with our Israeli colleagues, and part of us is just remind us that we are all interconnected. And I had many experiences and many stories I could share tonight about that time there, but there's one in particular that has been bouncing around in my mind. During our time there, when we went to go spend time in Tel Aviv, it happened to coincide with the Tel Aviv Marathon. And so there were several of my colleagues who were running rabbis who coordinated a group of us to go participate in the marathon. Now you had three options, you could do the 5K, you could do the 10K, or you could do the whole marathon. And then the idea was is we would raise money to support our reform colleagues living in Israel. Now, admittedly, none of us ran the whole marathon. A bunch of us did the 5K and then a few insane people, not naming any names, did the 10K. And I will admit, a little humble brag here, I had my best time ever in a 10K, which of course is true because it was my first ever 10K. <laughs> but the thing that really struck me as we were running down the streets of Tel Aviv, other than the fact of why are we running down the streets of Tel Aviv, was that it was lined with Israelis. Young, old, there were rows and rows of school children just cheering us on as we're running down these streets, questioning everything existential in our decision to participate in this insane activity. And the kids were out there and I was giving high fives all along the way. And it was beautiful. You saw people in seat seats, the fringes, traditional, well, traditional observant Jews, although we are all traditional observant Jews, running in their seat seats. You saw men and women running very scantily clad, all next to each other. That is the beauty of Israel, is everybody can live and own their own Jewishness, and we all celebrated the culture of just participating in this incredible event. Not to worry, all 50 of us rabbis survived. The miracle was, afterwards, we all found each other again and made it back to our convention. And whenever I think about all the stories of Israel, I think about that experience of seeing the joy on people's faces. I took this picture before the marathon. I'm, you know, all happy and smiley. I took the picture after. It was a little bit different, but we all made it. And it was incredible physical and an incredible spiritual and an incredible emotional moment. And when I think about Israel, that's what I think about. And so waking up on this past Saturday morning to pick up my phone, as I often do more than I should, I saw the heartbreaking news as we were preparing for our Shemini Yatzeret Festival morning service. And of course, the news was devastating, but that was just the beginning of it. As the day proceeded and the days proceeded, we started to get more and more understanding of all of the horrors that transpired. This was not an act of resistance. This was an act of terror. This was not an act of statehood. This was an act of extreme violence. And it was heartbreaking. And I was thinking about what do I say tonight to provide comfort for you? What, how do I envision in Israel not like the Tel Aviv Marathon, but an Israel in flames, an Israel in tears, an Israel in devastation. And I have a confession to make. I struggle to prepare my words for tonight. I am overwhelmed. 
colleagues shared with me the words of Adam Grant, who posted on a social media site. It's not just seeing suffering that's painful. It's hurting for others while feeling unable to help. There's a term for that helplessness, empathic distress. Over time, it leads to burnout and withdrawal. If you're overwhelmed and exhausted by a heavy heart, you are not alone. You are feeling empathic distress. Tonight, I am not going to try to historicize the events. I'm not going to try to contextualize them. It's an important conversation, and we need to have it. But tonight, I think it's enough to say we Jews are not okay. The pictures, the stories, the news, one more upsetting than the next. And then every now and then, there will be miracles, including the recent news that an elite IDF force rescued over 250 hostages. But even amidst that, there will be and there is more heartbreak. As my colleague Rabbi Jeffrey Middleman wrote about Bereshit, this week's Torah portion, why does each day end with the phrase, Vayi Ere Vayi Voker? There was evening and there was morning. We would expect that it would go, there was morning and there was evening since our daily rhythm begins when we wake up and ends when we go to sleep. So why is the order reversed? Well, the word Erev evening is also used to mean chaos, as in the phrase Erev Rav, a mixed multitude. And the word Boker, morning, may evoke words related to either split or investigate, as in put things in order. With the repetition of the words by ye Erev, by ye Boker, there was evening, there was morning, the story rhythmically evokes an idea of chaos, then order, at the end of each day of creation. But the universe's natural tendency is to go from order to chaos. Scientists know that from the second law of thermodynamics, but we can also see it in our own lives. And the only way to combat that tendency is to invest time and energy to overcome it. That's one of the key messages from the opening chapters of Bereshit. If we do nothing, the world will remain tohu vavohu, wild and waste, nothingness and void. God brings order out of chaos, and if we see ourselves as created in the image of God, that is our job as well. Chaos is what we're seeing right now. As we hear more and more stories of the atrocities of this past Saturday, but amidst the chaos, we also hear about stories of unity, stories of heroism, stories of care. Stories like those of Yair Golan, who for months opposed Benjamin Netanyahu's government and spoke and wrote forcefully for both Palestinian rights and judicial reform, and on Saturday risked his life to save innocent civilians. Stories of Tel Aviv restaurants, a city where religious and secular Israelis disagree vehemently, made kosher's kitchen, made uh, kitchens kosher, so that Orthodox soldiers could eat in them in preparation. Stories of solidarity across the world with landmarks lit up in blue and white. Sadly, there will be more chaos coming, which is heartbreak for all of us who want to see a more just and peaceful Middle East. Amidst all this heartbreak, even with these stories of affirmation, even at this time where we continue to feel empathic distress, what can we do? Well, at our community gathering this past Monday and as Rabbi Berzin spoke about, we can gather as in community as we have done this evening. We can support those organizations like our own Jewish Federation of Omaha, which is collecting resources to send to the victims. We can pray for peace. We can dialogue with those with whom we can have important conversations about how to bring a vision of a better world together. 
But on this Shabbat, most importantly, we need to affirm life. We need to tap in the creative. We need to rejoice and celebrate our Judaism loudly and proudly, even if our hearts are breaking. Celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, celebrating B'nai Mitzvah, celebrating friends from the greater community, celebrating each other, even if our hearts are breaking. And we need to share stories of our beloved Israel, stories like the Tel Aviv Marathon, stories of when you may have visited there, perhaps with one of our own communal trips, stories of the people you encountered, not just the land, not just the politics, but the people, the human beings who reside there, who have hopes, who have dreams. All Yisrael, Averim, Zebazeh, all of Israel is responsible for one another. This teaches us that we are all interconnected. This is why as Jews we celebrate Nobel Prize winners. This is why as Jews we mourn when someone devastates our communities acting as Jews. And this is why as Jews we come together in times of great difficulty and in sorrow. For in community there is comfort. In community we can lift each other up. In community we can stay united. We may not agree on what comes next, for that is also very Jewish. We may not agree what the future may hold, for that is also very Jewish. But what we cannot do is let go of the hope, the hope for a homeland as a Jewish people, the hope for a homeland for all who reside there, and all can live under their own vine and fig, and none shall be afraid. But until that day comes, let's not give in to the feelings of, of empathic distress. And if you need to be lifted up, if you need to be elevated, affirm your heritage and our tradition by finding comfort in one another. And maybe one day, when the violence has receded, the suffering has ended, we can all return to Tel Aviv, run a few kilometers, and then celebrate our her heritage by dancing in the streets of Jerusalem. Shabbat Shalom. I'd like to share with you a, a prayer for Israel, written by one of our Israeli colleagues, Rabbi Mira Regev. Our God in heaven, Shekhinah, source of life, rock and redeemer of Israel, strength, strengthen and deliver all who stand on guard protecting their homes, safeguard and save them from any trouble and distress, and bless their actions. Hear their prayers and ours and deliver them. Save those who are trapped in their homes. Grant them inner strength, faith, and hope. Bolster them in these terrifying times. Send your mercy to the anxious mothers and hurting fathers and the children sitting in shelters. May it be your will to remember us, to take notice of us, to meet us with compassion, for we trust in you. Return all those kidnapped safe and sound to their homes without the spilling of innocent blood, without their souls becoming tarnished by horrific acts. Strengthen those who protect our holy land, soldiers and civilians alike. We pray nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they study war anymore. Compassionate God, please arouse your mercy for us, and may the verse be fulfilled. From the seed of peace and the vine shall produce its fruit. The land shall produce its yield, and the sky shall provide their moisture. I will bestow all these things upon you, and you shall, have a, and you shall be a blessing and have no fear. And we say together, Amen. Amen. Our song, Ein Li Eretz Acheret, I Have No Other Homeland.
Our thoughts turn now to our own loved ones, the martyrs of our people, those who have died in the season and in years past. Of course, our hearts turn to all the victims of the recent terror attacks in the state of Israel. We're in the period of Shloshim, the 30 days of mourning for Nina Freifeld Giles. And the earth sites, the anniversaries of the deaths we observe this week, and when you hear the name of a loved one, we do invite you to rise in body and or in spirit. And if you rise in body, we encourage you to remain standing. For Robert L. Baker, Louis J. Bernstein, June Lillian Block, Ray Leah Brodkey, Justice Donald Brodkey, Ray B. Brodkey, Barbara Lieberman Froman, Ida D. Gitlin, Ruth Fox Gorman, Lillian Alice Lipsy Greenberg, Addie Gross, Eric Brandon Harrison, Emma Jarecki Hart, Rose Hiller, Albert L. Cohn, Sidney David Leo, Louise Rothkop Mayer, Orville Alex Milder, Jeanette T. Neponik, Mary Kaiser Rabiner, Sam Rothman, Harry Rothholtz, Milton Salen, Felicia Schreier, Hi S. Schreier, Ivan's Aaron Siegel, Shirley Smirin, Sharon Sobel, Audrey Sofer, Edith Stein, Mrs. Tony Stern, Robert M. Stifler, Sylvia Summer, Saul Yaffe. If there are additions or corrections, we invite you to mention them at this time. We recall as well the six million who perished in the violence of the Shoah. Our griefs and sympathies are mingled. We invite all others who so choose to rise as well in solidarity with the mourners as we join together as one community in Kadisha to Mourners Kaddish. Ye Kadal, ye Kadash, me Rabbah, be al ma di brach irute, be al mlich malchute, be chayachon of yomechon. Vichaye de Kol Beit Yisrael, Bagala Vizman Kari Vimru Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mivrach Lealam Ulameo Maya. Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Baar Vit Romam Vit Nase. Vita Dar Vita Le Vita Lal Shme de Kudisha Brihu. Le Ela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata. Tush Vichata Venechamata. Tamiram Bialma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Bechayim Aleinu Ve'alko Yisrael, Bimru, Amen. O Se Shalom Bimromav, Hu Ya'ase Shalom, Aleinu Ve'alko Yisrael, Ve'alko Yosheh Tebel, Bimru, Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved, and especially comfort to our community and all those in pain. Together as one loving family, let us say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
First of all, we want to wish a mazel tov to Ari and to the Blumkin family. We are delighted to be able to have this light and this joy as we get to call you to Torah tomorrow morning. We invite you to join us for tomorrow's service at 1030 so that we can celebrate and continue having this joy together. I want to thank everybody, everybody for coming. Thank you to our guests for joining us this evening. Thank you to Julie for beautiful music, for Eli and Sarah for running tech, and for Mindy for taking care of our hospitality along with Toby's team, and for Scott for handling all of our building needs. Um, please remember that you should um, say a mazel tov to Ari and to the Blumkin family, and to thank you to the Blumkins for sponsoring the Oneg in his honor tonight. Um, next Shabbat will be our first hot Shabbat of the year. We braid our own challah, celebrate Shabbat services with a brief service including songs and stories, and we follow it with dinner and kids' activities. Please register to let us know that you're joining us. Um, we've also updated our email system, so please reach out if you feel like you are no longer receiving communications that you typically receive from us. There's lots going on. If you have any questions or things that you need, please con don't hesitate to contact Mindy, talk to any one of the clergy, or anybody who you see wearing a nice blue name tag. It indicates that they are a member of the board or on Toby's team, or part of our amazing volunteer crew who knows the answers or knows how to find the people who know the answers. So. And, and if you ever feel like you're overwhelmed, we're always happy to sit down and have a conversation with you as well. So. And we know the service is a little more somber tonight, even in moments of celebration, because that's where our hearts are. But we promise tomorrow it's going to be joyous, it'll be wonderful, and we will celebrate as a community, just as we also seek comfort as a community together. We yeah. invite Ari to come up for the Kiddush. We invite everyone who so chooses to rise in body and or in spirit. Baruch Atanai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Puri HaGachen. Amen. Baruch Atanai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kineshana B'mitzvotav, Baratz HaBanu. B'Shabbat Kod Shoh Ba'ahava Uvratzon, Kin Kin Lanu, Zikaron Lama'ase Boreshit. Ki hu yom tehila la mikra e kodesh ze her litiat mitraim ki banu bacharta va otanu ki dashta mikol ha amim va shabak kochacha va ahava uvratzon kin chaltanu baruch ata adonai Makadesh Hashabat. Lachayim. 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 There's more out there too. Good. Yep. Good job. Thank you, Ari. You can mm. go back to your family. Amazing. See, it's such going to be wonderful tomorrow when he leads the majority of the service. He's going to be an excellent leader for us. We close our service tonight with Olam Chesed Yibane. We pray that together we will build a world from love.
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Zoom Maven. <laughs> You're welcome, Karen.